Good morning, everybody. Thank you, or good afternoon. Uh, thank you for attending. Um, hope you're having a great day. For some of you, I understand it's the beginning, and for others, it may be the end, but uh, hope everybody's having a good day. And today, we're going to be talking about field forensics for the front line. So let's get this rolling. So this is me. Uh, I'm your host, Rich Ferrelli. Uh, thanks for joining me today. You know, I hope by the end of this webinar, you're going to share my enthusiasm for how mobile uh, device investigator uh, can help you solve your cases, help you get that information that you're looking for up front. You know, I've been with ADF for three years after a 22-year career in uh, law enforcement. And during my career, you know, I had the opportunity to perform forensic examinations, uh, most of the time, uh, you know, 99% of the time probably, and also investigate the cases, worked a variety of cases, you know, frauds, homicides, threats, uh, jury tampering uh, was one of my favorite where the digital evidence really hinged, uh, that case hinged on that. Um, but also, you know, I recall working a lot of overtime shifts or extra duty jobs, and you'd end up with this case in your hand that involved a mobile device or, you know, uh, you have a, a cooperating witness or subjects that are willing at that time to let you collect data. And uh, this is kind of this one of the situations we're gonna be covering here uh, today. So we've come a long way since the introduction of digital forensics and law enforcement. And we need to keep that moving forward. Uh, progress with the tech, technological ability, abilities that we have, the technology that we're working with, the advances that have been made, you know, we don't want to let that stagnate. One way we do this is empowering the frontline investigator, giving them that ability to collect those relevant items at the time the device is available to you. You know, the on-scene officer agent finds yourself in a position where it always seems you're waiting for someone else to come collect the video for you or your documents, your messages, the image, the image that's relevant to your case, you know, and does that ever drop through the cracks? Sure it does. You know, you, you have a cooperating witness who, you know, wants to run away at the time, but you're like, all right, you know, I'll get, I'll get the video tomorrow. Uh, but then I don't call you back. They don't, they don't want to, you know, reach out or they don't want to make that travel, you know, 10, 15 minutes back to a station so you can grab this. Um, people change their minds, you know, they can't be located. So we want to collect that data up front if we can. You know, they say 90% of your cases can be solved with 10% of your data. And uh, on a lot of occasions, that data could be collected right there on scene at the time of your initial encounter. You know, it doesn't take a long time to make a logical or advanced backup of, of a mobile device um, while you're doing an interview, while you're keeping the person occupied. Um, that that backup can be done and the phone back in their hands uh, right away. You know, there's there's really no extra time needed to do this. Um, you got the initial consent. You got a cooperating witness, they're in front of you, you know, grab that data, move on. Mobile device investigator gives you a means to an end. Close it out now, get the data you need, move on. So with that, you know, over the years and something I've always talked about and something I've been employing since the early 2000s, uh, is triage. It has become an, accepted, an accepted practice for starting your investigations. And there's no time like now when you have this information in your hands, when you have it right in front of you and you need to get it to move your case on and not wait. Uh, it, it is tough. It's, it's, you know, you want the guy in your department or in your lab to come out and do this for you, or you want the people to come in and have him do it, but it really backs you up. They, they're they backed up, now you're backed up with your cases, and you just want to kind of get it done. You want to grab this evidence faster, 
you know, you want to make sure that your victims are identified or you want to make sure that you have the information you need to keep your case going. We need to identify those suspects quickly. Uh, make evidence-based decisions, and that starts on scene. No time like now. Uh, everybody coming onto this job has grown up with a computer or a phone in their hand. So back in the day, you know, when I started doing this, there was a lot of, well, I don't know computers. I'm not technologically, you know, capable of checking my email or doing that. That's not the case anymore. Everybody knows what a computer is. Everybody knows what a cell phone is. Everybody has one. Everybody knows how to use them. Everybody knows what data is in them. So there's no time like now to get that into these into your frontline officers' hands who have the ability, who have the knowledge, and who have ways of talking to people who have these as well. So, you know, the, the ability to handle these devices and know how they're being used is inherent now. Um, and like I said, I'm repeating this, but no better time than now to start getting that data up front when warranted. You know, your, your low-hanging fruit, your artifact collection, volatile data. Now that in computers is one thing, but when you're talking about a cell phone in somebody's hands who's gonna walk away from the scene, that right there is volatile data. So collect it now. Perform your interviews, your interrogations while this backup's being done. Um, you know, you could have this backup in your hand. You don't necessarily need to scan at that moment. It's the data that you're collecting. Let's get that done on scene. Right, and just think about the situations where you can do this. Um, like I said, you're on scene, you, you, uh, there was a fight, somebody videoed it. Uh, you're on scene at somebody's house taking a, a threatening complaint and you just need the messages. Uh, but you wanna collect it in the right way. Uh, you're, you're on a knock and talk with somebody, uh, you're getting consent to look at this. Um, it could be done fast, efficiently, you know, your SROs, you're in a school dealing with people who have phones in their hands all day long, making complaints about things all the time, right? So if this SRO can sit at his desk doing his interview and make a backup of the, the, the mobile device that needs, you know, the communications that are on there, the multimedia that's on there, not necessarily a full blown, I want everything, but if they can do this, you know, why they're talking for 15 minutes and getting that back up a lot easier, you know, not waiting for anybody, not inconveniencing somebody who's cooperating with you by taking their, their life away from them. <laughs> Cause really phones are people's lifelines, right? Uh, everything they do and say uh, is on that phone. So again, kind of not to finish it, or wrap it up, but it's that next level, uh, collection and analysis on scene while you're there, all the relevant and actionable evidence you need. A lot of times you know exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you want. And while you're doing this, it's building a report in the background for you. You're taking that unique case information, putting it to work for you. And again, I, I was talking about backlogs, you know, not only your caseload, because now you have to wait for something to finish up your reports, um, but the, the strain and the backlog on the lab or the person that needs to come out or be called in or, or come out to grab, uh, make a backup for 15 minutes when he could be in doing you know, some of the other work. Uh, so again, up, up to the minute reporting, justifying your actions that you're taking on scene, everything is logged, everything is collected, and you're on your way with your case. Simple, you have a laptop or wherever you have this um, mobile device investigator installed. We're showing it here on a ruggedized laptop, great for in the cruiser, right? So your MDTs, your mobile data terminals, you have a phone, it's as simple as just connecting it through the cable. The tool will walk you through, which we're gonna show you on, on connecting the device and making that backup. Very, very simple. So with that, it's demo time. And before I show you that, 
if you're traveling to Dallas next week for the CACC, be sure to stop by our booth. Not only can you see it, put your hands on MDI. I will be there. I will let you touch it. I will let you back something up if you want. Uh, we will we'll work with the computers, with our digital evidence investigator. But we're going to have a cool little tool there, too, uh, that we really want feedback on and input on. And I'm really looking forward to, to, to meeting everybody and having you stop by and look at this item that we're going to have. So with that, let me change my screen here. All right, there we go. So here we are. This is Mobile Device Investigator. This is our our newest addition to the ADF family of tools. This is really designed to be put in the hands of the front frontline officer, agent, um, the SROs in the school, probation officers, whoever's out there needs to get this data fast without you know, having to call people out again, you know, this is it. So you can see if you're on scene, you have your laptop, you have your mobile device, um, you have this installed on your, on your Surface Pro, whatever you have it on, it, you go right here, scan uh, Android or iOS devices. It is logical only. We are going to make an advanced backup of that. Advanced logical. So what that means is you have to have access to the phone. You have to have the credentials. And if you got the person in front of you, you know, typically what you're dealing with uh, with these, especially on the front line, is a willing person, a cooperating witness, uh, or or a victim that wants to give you all the messages that they have and show you everything that they uh, they may have accumulated on their phone. So you have that mobile device, you go to scan devices and images, right? Here it is target devices. If you have the phone here, um, we're just gonna ask it to add a phone, right? So far so good. I'm gonna back up an Android right here, all right? So as you can see, it wants me to connect the device and it has instructions all ready there for me. So I just gotta unlock my phone. All right, so I've connected the phone. Uh, it went through all the steps to make sure I had everything set and the phone is now ready to be backed up or scanned. Uh, if for some reason any of these steps weren't done, it's going to give you the instructions where it says in the center, the Android device is ready and will be added to the list of targets, um, your instructions will show up here. So if debugging is not activated, it will walk you through the process to do that. Um, again, very simple to use. We also have a go by. So this is something that they can have, you know, attached to the back or in a pocket or in their pocket, they could pull it out and say, this is what I need to do to connect this phone. Also comes along with the training uh, and training is, uh, uh, for mobile device investigators, typically a day um, to get you through everything, not only uh, backing up and understanding mobile devices, but also uh, the analysis portion of the tool, really diving into that if it's something that you want to do. Um, so here, again, I've connected it. It's ready. I hit OK. You can see I have certain uh, search profiles here. This is if I'm going to scan on scene. Uh, and I want to I want to show you this uh, how it works. So let's say I want to scan and I just wanted to pull out my messages. I can choose that profile um, over here. I can give it a name. And we're just going to use demo here. Uh, you can see I can add fields. So the person who's doing the work has to add their name. I have to put a case number, right? And then I can hit scan. So now this again is if I wanna scan on scene. Not only am I gonna back it up, but I'm gonna start a scan. Um, and what this does is it, it it's connected to the Android now. It's going through and you can see it is starting to make a backup of the device. Um, that's it. That's all the person needed to do was connect the phone, 
choose what they want it to scan for and they're preset in here. So uh, if you're working with your forensic lab or if you want to spend some time up front, you can make some customized scans so you always have what you're looking for there and you just hook up your phone, choose what profile you want to scan and we'll get a little bit more into that or what in the what are in the profiles. But for this one specifically, I just grabbed uh, messaging. Um, the backup process, uh, let me talk about that a little bit. So with a heavily used iPhone, a lot of messaging, uh, a lot of transferred files back and forth, um, a lot of saved, saved items, a lot of phone calls, uh, a lot of search history, so a phone that's used every day for work and pleasure uh, takes about nine minutes to back up. And then if I were going to do a comprehensive scan on that, it can take, and I'll show you this in a little bit, it can take up to maybe 20 minutes on the scan for that phone. And that's pulling off all the multimedia, all the, all the video, um, all the messaging. Uh, putting things together in the background, what we're going to show you in the analysis portion is our tool really does do some of the work for you in the background. But nine minute backup, 20 minute scan, uh, and that's for comprehensive, that's for everything. But you take that nine minute backup, you hand the phone back to the person, and then I run a scan for uh, just the messaging that I'm interested in. That could take like 18 seconds. All right, 15,000 messages out in about 18 seconds. And then you're able to go through it and see what you want. Uh, filter, analyze, book, tag, all the different things that you really wanna do um, on scene. So um, that was for an iOS. For an Android, same thing, heavily used, work, personal. Um, we're talking about the same, anywhere from like nine to 15 minutes on the backup on that. You hand the phone back, a comprehensive scan on that was about 15 to 20 minutes as well. And again, messaging, you could pull those messages off again in seconds because um, you're cutting out everything else that you're looking for. And it's going to show you if there was messages transferred between, if there was other things. Uh, going on. You can sort your messages by, you know, a lot of people have different apps on there. So they're using Kick, they're using Viber, they're using WhatsApp. So if it's supported, we're pulling it out, you'll be able to sort those right out. You'll be able to sort by uh, the principal, the recipient, you'll be able to re uh, sort by just the messages that have attachments or MMS in it. Um, so a lot of different ways um, you could do that. So iOS, the backups, you know, the times is pretty much what you're going to be looking at because when you're on scene, that's the most important. It's grabbing the data. As long as you have the data, you can hand back the phone. They could leave. You could do the scan the next day when you come into work. You could do it later when you get back at the office, you're writing your report, um, or you can do it right there on scene after the person has walked away. And now you have that to to break down in all the different ways that you want to do that. Um, so also with this, and I am going to apologize a little bit here, this, this backup is usually done in a couple of minutes, um, but because I am broadcasting worldwide here from ADF Central, um, it's taking up some of my system resources, so it's taking just a little bit longer. And these aren't issues that you're going to have out in the field because this laptop's going to be dedicated to doing exactly uh, what you want to do. So it's just coming into the uh, finishing portion here. Uh, again, like I said, with, with Android and iOS, um, with the logical, we are making an advanced logical backup. So with that, we are pulling what is typically pulled in, in let's say, an iTunes backup or, or an Android backup, plus more. We're going in and we're, we're specifically grabbing information that is still available that we may need. So you can see here, 
as I was explaining that, that the backup had finished. And then the only thing I scanned for was messaging on here. And there wasn't a lot on there, but that just took, took seconds to do that. So you can see in five minutes, even though it may have seemed a little bit longer, five minutes, the backup was done. I can now pull that phone off, hand it back to the person and do any scans um, that I need to do on that. Same with, um, let's say you don't want to do a scan on scene. I can come into backup Android and iOS devices and it's going to ask me, you know, here, just move something on my screen. I could add a phone. Again, I would pick Android. I would connect the Android. Um, it would make the backup. I'm going to cancel this. And then I can hand the phone back. And now my backup is saved. And I could move on to either another phone. Maybe I have multiple people that I need to do backups for uh, while I'm on scene or multiple phones. So I could do one, hand it back, do another backup. I don't need to wait for a scan to finish. So. Another way to do that, so how you would do that, is I come back into scan devices and I say add a phone backup. And you can see here, I have a, um, let me actually go back here. I have an iPhone 7. I'm gonna select that backup folder. So now you can see there's my Apple iPhone 7. It's a backup. I just want to pull the messaging out of this. And this is one of those heavily used phones. So again, I have this set. So you have to put in your information. Uh, and you have to put in a case number. And then I hit scan. So one of the nice things the tool does is the first thing it does is you can see up top, it's saying caching files. So it's making a listing of everything that's in that backup for you, whether it's collected or not. <clears throat> so even though I'm just collecting calls, emails, messages, and saved contacts at this point, um, it is also making a listing of every other file and folder that's in this backup. So I can still search through and say, yeah, there, here's this, here's that. And when I do my more comprehensive scan later, I will be able to, to pull that information out. And it will also help you tie things together uh, in that analysis. So once that listing is done, you can see it's went through, it processed the calls, there were no emails, it's going through the messaging and parsing out the messages. Once the messages are done, it will go through and parse out all the contact information as well. Um, and I'll show you here the results in a minute. But if this was a scan that would take a while, um, if I was doing a comprehensive scan and maybe images were were something I wanted to look at, um, I could always go into view results as it's scanning this backup. So as it's collecting information, I can go in and see what it's collected already. Um, so there's no really there's no need to to wait. You can see here in the messages, it collected 15,000, almost 16,000 messages. They were iOS messages and Facebook messages. And then it went through and pulled out the contacts, 1,100 of them, and that was from the iPhone contacts. And uh, looks like some calendar contacts there as well. Uh, there you go. So calendar, iOS, iOS messages, and Facebook contacts were all parsed out of that. It's just going through and doing, uh, it's, going through the tables and uh, setting it up so you can do some keyword searches. And when it's done, you just hit OK. I go to view results. And I will tell you that this is typically, and I will show you in a second, that took a minute and 29 seconds because I'm using all my system resources. Again, broadcasting here from, from ADF Central. Um, but I'm gonna come back out here and go into my results. And here's iPhone 7 messaging only. And this was before I was doing the webinar. You can see here the date and time. It was at nine o'clock this morning here on the East Coast. And it was the messaging only on the same backup. Here it is down here on the bottom showing my target device, all the same numbers. Uh, and that took 18 seconds. So, it is fast. So imagine you're on scene, somebody has this device, you make a backup of it and you scan it just for messages. So the time of the backup is nine minutes. The time of the scan is 18 seconds. Um, 
that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about, getting you the information that you need up front. Um, little reminder here that I am going to start going through some of the other stuff. I know I'm talking, It's this isn't a back and forth at this point, but if you do have questions, please send them through. Um, especially if it's about connection uh, or something I've already covered and we will cover questions at the end. Um, next is review and scan results. So I've done my backups, I've done my scans. I could come in here and look, so there's my messaging only. All right. So I have uh, my results. I kind of just went over that summary page. I can come right into my messaging here. And the first thing I may want to do maybe is filter this down to the specific source or which are they Facebook messages or are they iOS messages? So you can hit uh, iOS and hit apply. And now it takes out all the Facebook messages and I'm just looking at the, uh, the regular messages. And again, I was talking about searching across your tables. So if there was a word or a specific word in the message I was looking for, I could put that word in and pull down that message right away as well. Um, another way to filter that, to filter here, um, is I was talking about attachments. So if I go to message type and I can see I have both text and MMS or uh, MMS or media, so I could select media, hit apply, and it will show me here the, the messages that may have those uh, attachments with it, what the attachment name was, date and time, uh, your principal, your recipient, incoming, outgoing, all that information is here across the top, but it is also on the bottom in your properties pane. So the properties pane on the bottom is always, always shows everything you have. And what that helps with is if you want to clean up your top and maybe not show every column, you'd be able to clean that up, keep your important stuff that you want to see in the top and then everything down on the bottom. So just that's like a housekeeping tip there on how to use it when you're going through some of this stuff. But again, keeping this to the front line, you know, uh, to the front line person out there doing this, you can see how easy it was in 18 seconds, I can come in here, go right into my messages and start filtering it and looking for exactly uh, what I wanted. I can go down to the principals and recipients. If I was looking for it between one specific number, the local user and a specific number, I can pull that up and I can hit apply. And now I just have that message as well. So let me pop out of there. So that was just messaging. Um, here's an iPhone 6. That was just, well, let me go back. I actually wanted this one down here, the custom iPhone demo. So this is a full scan. So you've made your backup on scene. Maybe you're going to do some investigation tomorrow. This is the full one. So um, this took 6 minutes and 11 seconds to scan this phone you can see some things are tagged. So if you have custom scans, you're looking for information, maybe you're running some hash sets and child exploitation cases, you'll be able to automatically tag those. A little more advanced, a little more on the analysis side, but again, when you get training for this, we go through all that, and I'm gonna show you some of that as well. Um, but we also have a classifier, so after the scan is done, the classifier will run, and break down your images in, if you're looking for something specific. So if I go into my pictures, and you can see some of the ones that were automatically tagged up on top. We mark your pictures with this little magnifying glass if it's a match, match on a hash set or a keyword, right? So if you're looking for specific keywords and it, the image has that name on it, it will automatically alert you to which can be filtered. So I can come in here and look for my matches. It's called a match and say, just show pictures with matches and it will do that. Another thing we do here, since I'm in pictures, uh, we link artifacts. So um, I'm gonna turn that matches pane off and come in here 
and we have linked artifacts. So you know you you have a messaging case. Maybe somebody sent an inappropriate picture, um, and and like here, I've pulled out 15,000 messages. But I want the ones the ones I'm interested in are the ones that these pictures came through messaging. I could come in here, put that filter on right away, and now here's all the pictures that came through messaging. I can go to the picture that I'm looking for, and then all the information is down here on the bottom. Uh, I could take it to the path of where it was found. I could take it to the exact message, right? So now I have the picture, now I can go to the messaging. And then here's that message of when it was sent. I can see who the person was that sent it, who received it. And if I wanted to filter on this, I can do that as well. Um, so I can go back here and again, um, kind of putting that all together for you. We can also take it, if I come back up here to our timeline, um, which I want to kind of go over. So a timeline is all the artifact records uh, and all the files that have been collected, the individual artifact records of the files put into one comprehensive timeline. And what that does is it allows you to go in and see uh, what was going on. So if they had multiple messages going on uh, or uh, maybe going through and doing some web browsing or chatting with two or three different people, you'd be able to see that conversation uh, as it happened here um, going through. So I was taught they were talking to this person, this person, and that person. And I've had cases like that where, especially in the child exploitation venue, um, where somebody is talking or uh, talking to somebody under age on one chat, but then they're talking with somebody, you know, their age on another chat about what they're doing. So they're luring somebody or they're grooming somebody and they're having that conversation. By pulling it to the timeline here, you would see everything that they were doing um, here as well. Maybe they were making a phone call while they were doing this, this texting. You'd be able to put that all together um, there. So that's the timeline. Those are the pictures. If we've grabbed video, and I know a lot of you work with video, um, you can, we grab the video for you. Um, but when you want to go through it, we grab frames. So first frame, last frame, 48 from in between. You can set it on the first video and then arrow through all your videos and get a pretty good idea of what's going on in each video. If there was a video that you weren't quite sure of, um, then you can go to the preview tab and play that video as well to get a pretty good idea of what was in there. Um, so let me go back to the pictures. I started talking about classification. Um, let me turn off that linked artifacts. So when the scan is done, while the scan is running, the first thing we do is we place a photo probability onto your pictures or onto the, yeah, the multimedia. So we, what we call photo probability. So if I come into my filter and photo probability and set it at a medium, it's going to take any pictures between 70 or it has a probability of being a picture between 70% and 100%. And if I hit apply, it's going to um, filter out any pictures that um, are below that uh, threshold. So out of the 4,500 pictures here, uh, it took out 600 that it believed were emojis or icons, uh, that type of, of picture. So it kind of brings you down to um, uh, what you're looking for. It weeds out some of the noise for you. Uh, another thing we do is if it has a probability of zero, it won't get classified. So it doesn't waste the time on uh, video classification or visual classification. And you can see here all the different, we have 11 different categories. Um, you're doing drug cases and you're looking for weapons. You know, you can come in here and apply and you can see all the pictures of weapons, uh, or terrorist case, what have you. But I can also come back into my filter, turn that one off and turn on US currency, hit apply. And now I got pictures, you know, that have money you know they're always taking pictures of themselves with their drugs and their money or their weapons and their money in their hands so this kind of gives you a, a direct to that you're doing child exploitation cases we do have upskirting child abuse bestiality uh, pornography all different uh, you're looking for a portrait of these people the 
you know, the selfies, if you if you will, um, you could bring that in. So now you have all the portrait type or selfie type pictures that were taken on that phone as well. So a lot of different ways to to put that together. So attaching, simple, easy, uh, backup. So you can attach, backup and scan at once, or you can attach, backup um, and scan later. With both of those options, as soon as the backup is done, the phone can be disconnected and handed back to the person. Um, if it's involved in a scan, you'd have to wait to do another backup. So if you had multiple phones, you would do backup, hand the phone back, do another backup, so on and so forth. Then you could come into your analysis. Um, I showed you how quick it was or run a scan that's not necessarily everything, but just specifically what you're looking for. Um, videos, keywords. Uh, we do support foreign languages, uh, so if you're looking for foreign languages in there, you can do that as well. Um, when you are looking for specific words, like the word shellac here, um, not only was it found in a file, but it was also found in messages. So I can see right away exactly where my keywords are and what I'm looking for, kind of helps you zone in on what you're looking like, We're all about getting you to your evidence, getting you to your information as fast as we can. Um, you can see all the different things we've collected. If I wanted to go into browsing history, any table that we have, um, very easy to come through and sort by what you're looking for. Um, like I was looking for my Firefox. Um, if I just wanted to zone in on that, or if I'm looking for a specific uh, URL that had maybe the word weapons in it, I can do that and then filter by the word weapons in the URL. And you can see there that my filter is applied. Filters are easily turned on, turned off. Um, so let's get into, well, even with that, if I wanted to make a report on this case as well, you can see I had some things bookmarked in there. Um, I need to come in and uh, the next day make my report so I could send it off to court and say, this is why I did it on scene and this is what I was looking for. Anything that you automatically tag or bookmark is in the report automatically. If I want to add a summary page, it's just a matter of clicking on it, device information, if it was collected. Um, so very easy to put your report together and hand it off to somebody. We do HTML. We do uh, PDF, CSV, of uh, VIX data. So if you're doing child exploitation and your project VIX, um, cases you can uh, export that and maybe import your images into another tool um, or send it up and then standalone viewer so here's another awesome I love this feature of the tool so you do this backup of the scan or you do the backup and you scan it but it's for somebody else this is somebody else that's gonna go through this and, and, and look through the information. You put it in a standalone viewer, put it on a thumb drive, hand it off to them. They don't require a license to use it. They can go through and bookmark, tag, sort, filter, and they can also report. They just can't make another standalone viewer. So it's great, you do a backup, you do a comprehensive scan, hand it off to the investigator, they can go through it and, uh, and make their own cases on it or make their own reports as well. Also, when you're done with your case, you want to archive it. You put it in a standalone viewer, you archive it. If it needs to come out two years from now for a court case, um, you pull it out, it will open up like the day you put it away. You don't have to worry about backwards compatibility. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome feature. Um, with that, let me go into customization a little bit and then um, I'll finish up with a couple of other things and take some questions if we need to. But customization, so you can see here, I have, we give you two out of the box default, mobile device general profiling, mobile devices child exploitation. They go through, and I'm gonna copy one of these here. You can see in each one of our categories, whatever is checked is what it looks for. Um, we have some child exploitation uh, hash sets and keywords that we run. It's gonna pull out your messaging, your device data, uh, documents, multimedia, your user data, 
your web browsing history. So this, a complete scan would collect all of this. And again, this, this could take 20, 30 minutes, depending on, on the, what's on the phone, the power of the computer you're using to do it. There's a lot involved in that. But I want to add my own keywords or I want to add my own hash sets. It's very easy to come over here, add a new capture. I can search for my own keywords. I would put it in a category. If I didn't already have one, I'm going to put it in one called keywords and just name it mine for right now. Um, but I, w I looked for that word dual before. If that was one of my keywords, I could just type that in. If I thought it was unique enough, especially with text messages, right? So everybody's got their own language when they use text messages. And sometimes, you know, they misspell things or the, per the victim says, yeah, they sent this message and oh yeah, they misspelled this. So if you put that keyword in there and you can t you automatically tag it because you say, I know if I find that word misspelled, it's going to be there. So you can tag it. Um, then you could put a comment, especially with foreign languages. If you have a foreign language word you're using, you could put that word in as your search expression and then comment could be the translation of it. Um, or, you know, victim's name, you know, I have Delmar over here and Delmar is a victim. I can type that in as well. Now, whatever you're looking for, you could type them in, but I can also import. So CSV or text, I can point it towards that list and pull that list in. When I have my keywords in, there's a few different ways to search for them. We search against file and folder names. So if the word Delmar was the name of a document, it would pick it up here or name of a folder. Uh, artifact records um, from the other captures. So your web browsing, uh, your device data, your messaging, all those other captures that have collected data, it will run the keywords against there. So if Delmar was something that was searched in that Firefox data, it would show you um, there, it would show you the keyword hit there. And then here, content and metadata. If I'm looking for it in documents or internet files or text documents, that's where I'm looking for the keyword. I would tell it here how I wanna identify these files, where I wanna look, uh, where I wanna target on that mobile device and then advanced file properties. Um, I'm going over this really quick. Um, this is all part of the training as well as uh, we have some uh, videos on our website. Um, they're nice, short, this is how you do this type of videos. If you're looking to add a keyword, watch this video. It's short, it's sweet, uh, gets you done. Um, you would save that, that would become part of your profile you can also add your hash list much the same way you put it in a category give it a name pull in your hashes so I have images from another device that I want to see if they're on this device I could point it towards the folder it would bring those in and hash them I could point it to one of my own hash lists and I can also import the project Vic or Cade uh, hash sets just pointing it to their JSON file and it'll bring those in. Once they're in, again, I just tell the system these are pictures and video, hashes of pictures and videos, where I wanna look, how I wanna look, and it becomes part of my profile. So again, um, that's how I made these, these mobile multimedia only, messaging only, and then messaging and multimedia. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Maybe you just want the artifacts. Maybe you just want it to go through and pull device information for you first. Um, a lot of different ways you could break this down instead of doing a complete uh, scan. But when you do have the time, absolutely do it. Do a complete scan and, and go through and do your full analysis. With that, so we've done scanning. So this is where you hook up the phone. Um, you have to have access. It runs a scan as soon as the phone's done backing up. You can hand the phone back. Second one is backing it up, you back it up, you hand the phone back, and then you could back up another phone. You don't do the scan yet. You choose that backup when you are ready to go do the scan. Um, reviewing your scan results, setting up your scans, uh, settings, uh, that's where you would uh, globally make your tag references if you wanted, uh, where your licensing information is, where your data paths go to, and if you wanted to add your own scan information fields like agent name, case number, room, um, seized from, so on and so forth. Uh, that, and then our user guide is always here as well. 
Um, again, we have all the latest and greatest on the website under our downloads page. We have our learn videos um, where you can learn to use all the different features and functions of our tool. We are not just mobile device investigator. We also have digital evidence investigator, um, which is for computers, and you can bundle that with Pro, uh, which I will go over here in a second. So let me pull this back up. So mentioning the other tools. MDI, it's a single uniform user experience. Um, our tool is the same, whether it's Triage Investigator, Triage G2, DEI, Digital Evidence Investigator, or MDI. They look the same, the analysis is the same, the function is the same, there may be some different features to it, but it's, there's no learning curve from one to the other. Uh, our profiles, I kind of went over that. They're pre-configured and you can also customize them. Um, when you get into the computer, we have them broken down by quick, intermediate, and comprehensive. Um, you can create your own. The timeline view, the who, what, when, and where, the, the putting the user to the files. Um, making a timeline based on activities, based on people. Uh, that timeline is very, very powerful uh, and a, a, a great, great part of the tool. Uh, we were one of the first uh, companies to combine the files, artifacts, and user activities into a single timeline view. So you think about that. A lot of other timelines say, okay, the SQL light file for the Firefox history was hit at this time. Well, that doesn't really help you much. We break out all those records and put that into the timeline along with all the files um, and combine that so you can put this all together. Uh, triage through investigation. I just kind of, I hit on this as I'm going through. So we could do a fast triage, even with the mobile. We can say, I made my backup, now I just want the messages and later I'll go through and do my comprehensive scan. We do the same with computers. You know, we can process it and do a triage in, in minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. You know, we can set it so it runs 15 to 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And then we could also set it that it runs hours, gets everything from everywhere. So it's very, very customizable uh, and lets you um, cater to what you are looking to do. Portable reports, I kind of went over that. Um, great to hand off to other investigators, to prosecutors. They can be sanitized. Um, so a lot of different things to do there. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm really proud of the products that we have. Uh, I am committed to helping you. Not only do I do this, I do training, I go to the shows, uh, but if you call in, I'm one of the people that you'll talk to. Uh, one of my mottos is I want no frustrated users. You have a problem with a tool, you give me a call, you send me an email, we will get somebody working on it as soon as we can. Uh, we're, we're optimized for speed and accuracy. We are all about getting you to your information as fast as you can, taking the noise out of the way, letting you make your decisions, and then you can go back and do the other when you do have time or hand it off to your forensic guy and he can go through and do a more detailed uh, report at that time for you. But it's all about putting it in your hands, getting you what you need, helping you move on with your case, cutting your backload, your case load, because you're waiting for somebody else. Um, I hope this all helped. If it's something you're interested in, try ADF.com, give you all the information on, on our tools, fill out a couple forms, and you will be on your way. So with that, are there any questions? And I see one. Um, let me see if I can expand this a little bit. There we go. If there's an SD in the card, will MDI back it up at the same time as the phone or do you have to do it separately? Yes, the SD card is part of the backup process. Um, but you also have the opportunity um, if you wanted to take it out and make an image of it, a uh, forensic image of that SD card separately, you can do that as well. But it is part of the backup process. 
And that seems to be all I have at this point. Again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, if we, if you're coming to CAC, uh, you know, stop by, say hello, see our new little gadgets that we may have with us, uh, walk away with some swag. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you very much. And everybody uh, have a great rest of your day.